Today I am building a map and plan organizer for my wife. Hey guys, how's it going? To start this project off, I wrestle a full sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood onto the table saw to rip off a 13 inch or so wide strip. Then I take the strip over to the miter saw and cut it to the lengths needed. These will be the sides and top of the organizer. Then I move back to the table saw and set up a half inch sheet of plywood and also cut it to 13 inch or so wide strips. And then back at the miter saw they also get cut to their required lengths. These will be the shelves of the organizer. Now with all of these pieces cut to their lengths I head back to the table saw and now that these pieces are a lot smaller and easier to handle I cut them down to their final width. With all of them cut to size I figured now is a good time to get everything sanded down since I won't have the space to get all of these sanded properly when the piece is fully assembled. I sand everything up to 120 grit at this point. Now that everything is somewhat sanded, I break out the pocket hole jig and drill in the pocket holes on all of the horizontal pieces. To make everything easier later, I'm going to install the edge banding now. The way I like to do this is to rip down 2x4s on the table saw into 1 8 to 3 16 inch thick slices and then also thicker than the plywood edge. Then I glue them to the edge of the plywood and hold them in with tape until the glue dries. With the edge banding now dry, I'll cut the excess off the sides with the pull saw, and then for the face I'll clamp the plywood down to my workbench and trim off the excess with a flush trim bit in my trim router. Then to smooth out the transition between the edge banding and the plywood, I break out the sander again and sand the edge banding down to 120 grit as well. And now that everything is sanded once again, I notice that a few of the pieces have cracks or other imperfections in the veneer of the plywood, or places where the edge banding doesn't quite close in properly, so I pick up some wood filler and fill in all of the imperfections. And again, break out the sander, except this time I take it up to 220 grit, since at this point I should be done with the major sanding. I didn't notice this until I went to stack all of these together and realized that the majority of the corners didn't line up. My guess is that my miter saw wasn't perfectly square when I originally cut these, so to remedy this I break out the crosscut sled since I know this is square, or at least square enough for me, and clear out maybe half a blade width on either end of all of the shelves, which squared everything up nicely. So now that everything is sanded, pocket holed, and square, I decide I'm moving on to finish now. So I break out the finished drying rack which I built specifically for this project. If you missed that video you can check it out up here. And start off with the pre-stained conditioner. I could finish it all later when it's fully assembled but I don't think I have enough space to fit my hand in between the shelves. With the pre-stain done I move on to actual stain which I leave sitting on the surface for about 10 minutes or so and then wipe off the excess. With the staining done, I move everything over to my basement finishing room and start applying polycrylic to all of the pieces. I've never used polycrylic before, so I saw it on sale and I picked some up. It seems fairly similar to the polyurethane I typically use, but this seems to dry a lot faster which allows for faster recoating. I apply three coats of polycrylic to all of the sides and denib the finish with 320 grit sandpaper in between coats. A downside with pre-finishing everything is that now during assembly I won't be able to get a strong glue joint since the glue will just sit on the finished surface. Though in this circumstance I'm not too concerned as the weight requirements that this unit has are fairly minimal. It'll hold paper. After several days of finishing it is finally time for assembly. Starting from the top and working my way down to the bottom I attach the 3 quarter inch thick sides to the 3 quarter inch thick top then using my level as a spacer with the sides taped up to prevent damage to the finish, I screw in the next shelf and repeated the process working my way through the full height of the cabinet. I ended up being exactly one finished panel short, so you know, a couple days later to finish that one up, I installed the last one. And really this was just a limitation of my finished drying rack. First project and it's too small. Since I haven't done it yet, it's now time to install the edge banding to the top of the cabinet. Having this piece of edge banding already finished, I break out the cheap western rip saw I had in my inside tool kit and cut the edge banding to length. And then since all of my clamps are out in my shop, I use some wood glue for the permanent hold and some CA glue for the clamping pressure while the wood glue dries, which works really well. 
The last step to finishing this up is to install the backer. So after I grab my measurements, I head out to the freezing shop and I break out some of the compressed fiberboard I had in stock and rip it down to size. Then I take it back inside and tack it into place with some finishing nails. And with that, this project is done. So I take it upstairs to the office to put it in its new home. My wife and I are both in the landscape industry and she had previously been doing some work on the side for some colleagues and needed some space to sort out the different projects that she had been working on. We are typically working with 11 by 17 sized plans and those take up a fair bit of space when you have 30 of them laid out on the table. It's been in the office for about six months at this point and has been working perfectly since then. You wouldn't even know that there's no glue holding it together other than the fact I just told you. So on that note, thank you guys for watching and if you like what I'm doing here, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more. If you have any questions or comments, I look forward to reading them in the comment section below. And if you want to see more current projects, you can follow me on Instagram at John the Shriner. Otherwise, I hope to see you in the next video and have a good one.